let's uh, let's take a step back to what we did the other day. Um, we're gonna create this in, in a somewhat more intelligent way than we need to for this exercise, but I'm gonna show you why um, at some point. But um, so let's go to um, transform or forget uh, freeform. Yeah, sorry. Let's go to surface freeform, and we're gonna go to extrude. So um, if you guys recall, um, extrude is going to um, ask you for a base geometry to extrude, which is pretty easy. Is this extrude right, not linear or anything? Nope. Uh, this is surface freeform. Um, so it's going to ask you for the base geometry, which is this, and they're all going to shoot upwards um, once you uh, provide. Oh, no, it doesn't have a default vector. That's right. Okay, and that's going to ask you for a direction. Okay, so. Um, for the direction, uh, I want it to be very clear to all of you that the, the surface will have what's called a surface normal. Um, so some of you are going to have a surface normal that shows backwards, right? Those are the ones with the dark red. So we're going to encounter problems here. Okay, and I'll show you how to correct it. But um, so, uh, and we're going to find the surface normal and we're going to extrude along the surface normal um, so that we can put it on a curved surface. And I think this is the first time we've done that, right? We didn't find a surface normal yet, right? Okay, do you know what a surface normal is? Okay, I'll explain it. Um, the best way I can explain it is by letting Google do the work for me. No, I'm just kidding. I could explain it just fine. But they have really cool graphics that explain it very well. You're recording this, right, Kevin? Yes. So um, the general explanation of a surface normal is that it is the perpendicular axis or otherwise like the z-axis so to speak of any u and v point on a three-dimensional surface when i say u and v point i mean if you draw a grid across any of these surfaces the the grid line is like a value of u or v right so that's what we plugged in in a proportional way of 0 to 1.0 but it can actually be qu uh, quantitative um, and the exact measurement of what that distance is so this could be like a zero, that could be a one, that could be a two. But basically all these um, you know, z axes um, are surface normals, the n axis, okay? Um, so there are an infinite number of surface normals. So we have the task of mapping where on a surface we map that normal. Usually it's at the centroid. Um, so uh, this is gonna get a little long, so let's separate this here and um, I'm going to, well, let's see, normal, plane normal, face normal, face is in a mesh. I'm trying to see if there are any better ways of doing it than I usually do. Plane perpendicular to a vector, face normal has a mesh surface. No, we don't want to work with meshes. Okay, so um, this is the tool that uh, I usually create a tool for, um, and I'm going to show you sort of how it works, and then eventually I'll show you how to create a tool for it. But um, let's go to surface analysis. Also, I want to point out that this one is incredibly important. We're going to use it a lot, so make sure you're paying a lot of attention. Um, so we're going to drop in three nodes for this. We're going to drop in evaluate surface, which is down here. Um, and we're going to drop in surface closest point. It's right there. And we're going to need... Um, the area node. So all of these are in surface analysis. So it's going to evaluate surface? Evaluate surface, which is down here, uh -huh. surface closest point, and area. All right, so the way that these are configured might look a little confusing right now, but uh, basically the surface gets plugged into area. Surface closest point is going to find the closest point on a surface. So the surface is basically going to be, um, it's going to be um, mapping wherever you have a point and then where it would perpendicular be mapped onto that surface. So in this case, we happen to have points that are already on the surface. So if I plug the centroid into P, it's going to map that. And then it's going to ask you for the base surface. That's this. 
So I'm going to put that down here, put this up here. Okay. Um, put that down there. All right. So now we have um, evaluate surface. So what evaluate surface is going to do is um, I think it's going to change it into U and V coordinates so that it can read in three dimensions, if I understand that correctly. Um, because that description doesn't really tell me anything. So um, what's, what is important, though, is that the UV point here is going to be plugged into the UV point of evaluate surface, and then the surface itself is going to be plugged into S. Right. So this configuration, you're going to see this configuration a lot. And so what that gives us is a list of normals. Make sense? So um, I'm just going to show you, and you can see here in the map, right, that it's actually created a bunch of planes on my um, centroids that I can then work with, okay? And the normals are, are extruding off of that uh, in the positive direction. So the only other thing I need is to use that extrusion direction and change the extrusion magnitude, right? Vectors have direction and magnitude, so what tool do I need? Amplitude. amplitude. Yeah. Um, under vector, we're going to go to vector again and we're going to pull amplitude. Vector, vector. Um, so we're going to plug the n into the v and then we're going to take um, a numerical value. Um, yeah, let's just do it out here. A slider, let's say 0 is less than 5.0. Plug that into A, and we get extrusions. Let me go back to perspective view. Right now it's at zero, but what you're going to see here is that now it extrudes into shades. So let me turn off all this extra stuff. Looks like architecture, right? Oh, yeah. Pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to give you some time to catch up, but first I want to ask, what questions do you have? Yeah. Is it extruding the other direction? Or it's just not working? Okay. It should be, if you have a flipped surface, it should be extruding the other direction. Yeah? Okay. So just flip your surface. There are a couple, actually I'll walk through that in a separate video here, but um, how to like flip the surface in a, if you already have like your model built, you know, in a, in a complex way and you don't want to flip your surface in Rhino, I'll show you how you can do it here.